Dr. Kim Townsville here. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today we have three more tips to help you thrive in school and make the best of it. One of these tips may surprise you. Maybe not. Maybe you're already smart enough to do this. First tip for today, we talked in previous videos about planning your work, how to calendar your work and scheduling your work. But you also need to plan time for fun. Yes, you need to plan time for fun. I had a student one time when I taught, she was in the 10th grade, had never been to a party. Never. She didn't socialize. She was all about school. I told her that her homework for one weekend was to go to a party that her classmates were having. She didn't know how to behave, so I sat and talked to her about how to socially engage with her classmates. And I told her, I said, you're going to have to come back on Monday and tell me how the social event was. I really didn't know if she was going to go or not. She came back on Monday and was so excited and told me how easy it was and how much fun she had just stepping out and having a little bit of fun with her peers. So it totally changed her perspective. Instead of being somebody who just kept her nose in the book like that all the time, she went out and had some fun. So here's your little money-making tip. I had a lady who did hiring at a local organization come and talk to my students one time. And she said, I have two resumes. I'm going to hire one person. This person has 4.0, made all straight A's, and that's all that's on this person's resume. Super, super smart, good grades. This person has a B average, but they got out and did a lot of volunteer work, got involved in the community, they were involved in clubs, they have some leadership skills and numerous certifications. Which one am I going to hire? This one or that one? She said this one all the time. In her opinion, all the person over here had done was to prove that they could keep their nose in a book and take tests and complete projects and please an academic professor. This person has proven that they can get out there and engage with people, complete tasks, finish tasks, and they're not just focused on one domain of their life. This person who is in the hiring capacity said, I need someone who can interact with people, not someone who can interact with a book. Something to keep in mind. So you can put some fun stuff on there and help it to build your resume by doing volunteer work, community involvement, things like that. So don't just be a bookworm. Did you ever think you'd hear a teacher tell you that? You just did. Plan time for fun. The second thing is, I'm always talking about time, 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 time management, but one key aspect of being successful in life is time management. If you can finish your task or assignment before it's due, now you have it off of your plate and you have this free time. You have like all this mental energy that's free. It's very empowering. So just try it one time and see if it works for you. Just finish something before the deadline and see how that makes you feel. See what you think about that. Evaluate it and see if it's worth it to you to go ahead and get things scheduled. Get them finished off your plate before they're due. It empowers a lot of people. Maybe you're one of them, maybe you're not. You're the only one that can find that out. Then the last tip for today, many schools still use lockers for their students. Some schools don't allow students to have lockers. But if you do have a locker, you want to try to organize that. So let me show you some tools that are out there that can help you organize your locker. These are just a few items that I found doing a quick search on Google. There are, of course, write-on boards. There are little other types of boards that you can put magnets and sticky notes on. There are things that can give you extra shelving. Those were firmer ones, and then you can also get softer ones, as we'll see in a moment. You can buy hooks to hang things on. There are the more soft top shelves. They're a little bit more forgiving, probably a little bit quieter. But there's all kinds of things out there to give you some more space and some organization in your locker. You also want to organize your book bag. I have a book bag and I just organize things in clear plastic baggies. Here's some ways I use baggies to help me organize in my bags, satchels, and backpacks. If I have a book I'm reading, some of those will fit into the larger uh, plastic baggies, the Ziploc baggies, and I suggest getting the ones that are the freezer thickness because they're going to be they're going to hold up a little bit better. This is a gallon size. And I would just put my books and my highlighters and my pens in there. One of my professors told me I was just trying to keep the book nice and neat so I could resell it, but I really wasn't. It was the book I was going to keep. This way I could just grab everything up, and I knew that I had what I needed to take with me to study for that class. I could also have enough room to put notes in there, note cards, or anything like that. 
The other thing that you can do is if you have the smaller freezer bags, uh, you can put your pens and pencils and markers and things like that in there. I recommend, again, getting the freezer top because they're going to be a little bit thicker. If you're putting your snacks in there, then it's okay just to use the sandwich type ones. They're going to be a little bit thinner, but they're not going to have the wear and tear on the plastics like the book and the writing utensils would. If you don't care for that, you can actually buy things like this. I love these. I have several of these. It has a front zipper compartment, and then it has an interior one. And then they just go into your binder so that you always have your things handy there. I keep name cards, passes, uh, money, things like that in there. But you don't have to have a binder to use these. They hold up extremely well. This one has a piece of cardboard in there. So if you're throwing that in your satchel or your book bag, you just reach in there and you're going to grab that stiff thing. You're going to know what you're getting with that. Also, when uh, your parents buy things like uh, sheets, pillows, things like that, sometimes they have these really stiff type of plastic containers that have zippers on them. These are quite large, but they're also useful to put things in. So if they're going to throw them away, ask if you can have them. You might find a use for them. Of course, I love all types of plastic baggies. I even use plastic baggies to sort and organize my plastic baggies. And now I don't have a problem, actually. If you're just using them for something like this, they're not really going to get dirty, but they're used. You don't want to put food in them, so I put them in a bigger baggie. Put those in my closet so that I can use them for non-food uses. I know for school security now, you have to have the clear plastic backpacks. And if your school will allow it, you can organize inside of your backpack or your satchel with just using clear Ziploc baggies. And it just keeps you from having to rummage around things. Thanks for watching. It's free to like, subscribe, share this video, leave a comment below. If you have a tip, we can all make each other smarter. And until next time, steady smarter, not harder. Bye.